How many Riddler trophies can you get as Joker in Arkham Origins? Or as they're called in this game, Enigma Data Packs, but they're the same thing. That is what we're going to find out today in this video. Spoilers, it's not going to be a lot. All right, we are here. Joker, Enigma Data Packs. How many can we get? Not going to be many. So for one, this man has no grappling hook. The only thing he has is these razor cards, which, you know, essentially function as the batarang. Can't grapple, so can't glide. So, yeah, he's... This isn't going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of parkouring to get to shit, I will say. Now, due to the Joker's restricted movement and my rules on not using restarting checkpoints or falling into water to reset your location, rule that I have for all of these Riddler challenges, but only really matters when the character can't grapple or glide, I needed to plan this one out a bit more. So you see here a map of Arkham Origins, with the north being the Arkham City side and the south being the New Gotham side. Now, during testing, I discovered a way to get from the New Gotham side via the bridge to the Arkham City side, but I couldn't find a way back. So we would have to start a new Gotham, where the first step would be finding a way to get from the connecting bridge to the ground level and back, ensuring I would be eventually be able to make it to Arkham City once done with the new Gotham side. Once I was done getting all the data packs I could in the new Gotham side, I would make my way to Arkham City side, find another way to get from the ground level back to the bridge as a sort of reset point, and then proceed to find all the data packs on the Arkham City side that I could find, and once I had found all the data packs I could find, that would essentially end the challenge. Now, the first thing we needed to figure out was to find a way to get back from the ground up to the bridge. Because if we couldn't reaccess the bridge, we couldn't make our way to the Arkham City side, which would cut us off from most of the data packs we could get, and would essentially make it not even worth checking out this side of the map. Now, it took a while, but I did eventually find a path that would lead us back to the bridge. From the ground. The first part being going up the scaffolding until I was right in front of this pipe. Once on this pipe, I would need to make a jump to that ledge. From there, I would make a jump up to the sign, then flawlessly make this follow-up jump. And finally, make the jump back to the bridge. So now I was free to go around the map, collecting any data packs I could get, as long as the puzzle could be done with basic parkouring and a battering, and I could still make it back to the ladder leading up to the scaffolding. That's one. That's two. And that's the only two I'm getting on this side of the map for now, and time to head to the Arkham City side. Yeah, a number of things contributed to only getting two, such as only having a Batarang as a gadget. That, and despite my best efforts of using the bridge to get on rooftops, I was never really able to parkour anywhere that led to us getting any more Riddler trophies. It also didn't help that the Burnley section on this side of the map is completely walled off and inaccessible without a grappling hook. Yep, that is just one big wall of buildings. And the one other Riddler challenge I could actually access and complete, sadly the data pack was in a position that required a back claw, or as you saw when I did it with Robin, gliding into it, both of which are not an option for Joker. Yeah, so I'm not going to be able to grab that one. Now, getting to the Arkham City side isn't that much of a problem, as I've managed to find this little jump up spot when testing. I 
If I'm remembering right, it was right about here. There we go. All right, Arkham City, here we come. Once on the Arkham City side, there was a nice path that we found very quickly that led us to quite a few Riddler trophies. From this data pack location, we would actually make our way to what would eventually become in Arkham City, the place where Bruce punches out Penguin and then climbs up to Ace Chemicals, and we will find that that pathway still exists. From there, we had a straightforward parkouring path that would end up with us getting three data packs. From there, we made it to this Y intersection of multiple roads that led us to two very important things. The first one being this jump up spot that allows us to get on the rooftops of Amusement Mile and this path that would lead us back to Sheldon Park and the Industrial District. Where we could use this truck and the nearby buildings to make our way back to the bridge. From there, we made our way to the steel mill where we collected quite a few data packs. Really? I'm right here. I'm right here. Are you really doing this to me? You know, I had hopes for these things being so janky that I might be able to, like, cheese some of, like, the remote battering spots, but they're so janky that they don't even work as batterings most of the time.
Let's go. Okay, now we can do this. I gotta say, this steel mill is working out well for me. Oh, I had forgotten you cannot open vents. I see you back there. Okay, before I grab you, I need to make sure I can parkour out of here. There we go. Okay, we're good. We can grab you now. After getting all the ones I could in the industrial district, I made my way back over to the Bowery to go visit the Mad Hatter's hat shop. Listen, Alice, you should be thankful, because if I had kidnapped you, you wouldn't even be crying right now. Sadly, that was pretty much all I could get for the Bowery and the Industrial District at this point in time, as obviously the Joker's limited tool set and limited parkouring abilities. Now, sadly, I couldn't find a way on the final offer. This is kind of the best jump spot I could find, and very clearly I can't make that. Now, I did find a route starting around here that led to quite a few Riddler trophies. From that data pack, I continued along the ice path until I reached the shore by the church. Where I was able to grab this data pack. Just making sure I can get out of here before I grab it. I then once again proceeded along the ice path, this time until I was behind the courthouse. Just grabbing this by anarchy. Now, this would be where the adventure ends, as I've locked myself in an area I can't get out of without reloading a checkpoint or jumping into water. However, there is one gameplay feature unique to Arkham Origins that I have still not utilized fast travel. Honestly, I am surprised this didn't crash the game, but this, we can work with this. With fast travel on my side, I pretty much didn't have to worry about being locked into locations as long as I could get outside, which opened up a lot more Riddler trophies for me. Into the bank we go. Grab this. Out we go. And fast travel back. Now, if I could not fall down here, that'd be very nice.
There we go. Now, we can't jump over this fence, but that's not a problem for us anymore. Okay, may have overshot that a bit. Well, we fucked it up, but I can just fast travel and try again. Perfect, now it's open, and I can fast travel again, and come down again. I could also use fast travel to finally get into the Burnley district, which has the GCPD and the sewers. However, frankly, going to Burnley was just a complete waste of time. Yeah, so the only way I was able to get this as Robin is by gliding into it, which essentially means I cannot get to this. Alright, I cannot progress any further in the sewers this way. Nope, not this way either. All right, yeah, there's just there's just no way for me to get up to the police station. With all other options exhausted, I made it my way to the last place where I could still pick up some data packs. The Gotham City Royal Hotel, which to get into, I had to go through this drop, which I cannot get back up from. And because I'm now inside, I cannot fast travel, thusly locking me into the hotel. Oh, so you're you're really not going to let me climb up anything here, are you? Well, there's at least one I know we can get. That is it. I am now stuck in the hotel forever. <laughs> Let's see how many I ended up getting. All right, extortion files deciphered 20 out of 200, so 10%. And if you're wondering, prior to me starting to use fast travel, I had 14 or 7%. I mean, I honestly can't say I expected better. I, we got to double digits. We got to double digits percentage-wise, so we take that. So in comparison to the other characters who can't grapple or glide, he, you know, he landed in the middle. Also, I'd like to note that not counting fast travel, because he had 11, which is essentially, no, sorry, he had 14, which was 7%. So he still beats Bruce from Arkham City without fast travel. Although <laughs> Arkham Asylum does kind of joke clear as Arkham Origins Joker. <laughs> Yep, yeah, so overall ranking is number seven, below Catwoman, above Bruce. Just really the only thing I really want to highlight is, while obviously the fast travel affected his percentage, it did not technically affect his ranking and position, as even at 7% he would have been above Arkham City Bruce Wayne, and he didn't manage to beat out Catwoman from Arkham City with fast travel. But yeah, another one down. Probably going to do Ninja Bruce next. And then finish up with just standard Bruce. Those two might end up being the same video. But we'll see how that goes. And uh, listen, if you've made it this far and you aren't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel so you will know about more videos in the future. And if you're already subscribed, thanks for supporting the channel. And I'll see you until next time.